All right, what is going on, everybody? Happy Tuesday, it's March 30th. My name is Amal. I am the lead analyst and co owner of the Alpha Trades community. If y'all are not familiar with the Alpha Trades community, our roots date back in crypto all the way back to the early 2017 days, where we were formerly known as Crypto Somniac. All through 2017 till 2021, we keep delivering uh, excellent content, a ton of content, and all things covered in crypto. So here's our community, right? Our community resides on Discord, okay? If you want access to all these channels that you see right here, okay, as a paid member, you can go to thealphatrades.com. You can hit the products page right here. And you can buy the Advantage membership subscription. Okay, this is going to give you access to all the lock channels that you see right here, so you can accomplish the gains that I was perusing through just earlier. So, what do these locked channels include? Okay, so every single day I provide two video updates on the market. The video that you're seeing right now is just one of the videos that you would get every single day through the week right? But twice a day, I would do one in the morning, which is my US morning time, and one in the evening, which is my US um, you know, evening slash night time, okay? And in that video, I would give you a recap of all the things that have transpired in the market, the things that I'm looking at, the trades that I'm in, if I've moved my stop up, what kind of trades that I'm entering, what assets am I looking at, where I'm taking profit, everything that you would need to know to stay informed of what's happening in the market. Now, I'm not a financial advisor, so I cannot give you financial advice, but I can tell you exactly what I'm seeing in the market. And if that matches your analysis, you can choose to follow my analysis and do with it as you wish. So the most important thing that we are doing in the community right now, I would say, is the 5K account challenge, okay? In this 5K account challenge, we provide all kinds of information of how my 5k account started, which is, you know, I started with $5,000 at the beginning of the year. Currently that account is up to about $13,300, which is uh, right over here, right? As you can see. And I talk about all the things that I'm trading, where I'm entering trades, where I'm getting in, where I'm getting out, uh, you know, all things related to the crypto markets, right? So whenever you guys see these videos, and these are only for Advantage members, you can see exactly what's happening uh, in the market and how I'm trading my account as per the things that are happening in the market. Okay, again, this is only for Advantage members. Now, <clears throat> aside from that, we have other channels uh, that are available aside from the 5K account challenge, which is the Bitcoin trading section. This is where I provide analysis on all things that are happening in Bitcoin. I update people multiple times a day um, about everything that I'm seeing in the market, You know where I'm exactly thinking about getting in, in the market, where I see risk in the market, where I think where I'm thinking about taking profit in the market, moving my stop up, et cetera. And here's where I get to post about my positions that I'm taking. Uh, and then of course we have our Bitcoin chat channel where we talk about all kinds of stuff, um, you know, uh, related to price action, technical analysis, you know, uh, fundamental analysis or things that are happening in Bitcoin, et cetera, right? And then, of course, we have the traditional altcoins, which is things like Ethereum and Litecoin and XRP. We trade those as well. And I would announce, you know, if I'm taking a position, I'd let people know exactly what I'm trading, where I'm getting in, where I'm thinking about getting out. But again, this is not a copy trading um, community. You can simply just see the visibility of what I'm doing. And if you want to use that information, that's up to you. With the same uh, information that we have in the trading altcoin or traditional altcoin section, we have the DeFi area and then the DEX and NFT area, right? So I talk about the positions that I've taken in these markets, exactly what I'm thinking about doing, what I'm picking up. You know, here's a perfect example, right? In the, um, where was it? In the DeFi spot buy area on February 15th, I announced that I'd be taking a position in Cake. Okay, so <clears throat> Pancake Swap, if y'all are not familiar with this, is basically another DEX. It's off the Binance Smart Chain, right? So I took that trade at middle of February, and currently it's at $18, right? 
So as you can see, right, my entry point was 685. Currently, we are up about 162% in that position. Um, I'm probably going to be holding on to this position for a longer period of time because I truly believe that pancake swap is going to be worth much more. But this is just one example of the one position that I'm showing you guys that I entered and how I let my advantage members know. All right. And of course, there are many other channels associated with that. We also have an equities tradings channel where I update members on exactly what I'm seeing in the market. Um, you know, maybe uh, areas uh, in terms of stocks that I'm thinking about picking up all kinds of cool information that we post here. So all in all, you know, you can go to the alvatrades.com website, sign up for our Advantage membership subscription and come trade crypto with us. Come learn about how we go about trading, uh, how, you know, we analyze the markets, etc. So with that being said, let, let's analyze the markets, right? Let's see where we are, okay? I'm sure there's a lot of questions about, is Bitcoin still bullish? Um, where are we headed? You know, what's going on with price action, et cetera, right? So let's discuss that from the smaller time frames to the large, okay? So first things first, um, Bitcoin has been trending up very nicely after putting in this bottom around 51K and has moved up, uh, you know, almost 9,000-ish dollars, right? So in this whole movement, there's been a good amount of buying activity in the spot area. Now, what do I mean by spot? That's BTC USD, um, the asset itself, right? On, on Coinbase, Kraken, Bitstamp, um, you know, Binance, et cetera. Not XBT, which is a perpetual swap contract. These, these are basically futures, right? So whether it's uh, XBT or a BTC perp on FTX or, you know, uh, futures on Binance, those are not the same thing as spot. But the futures contracts, these right here, XBT, track the underlying asset, which is BTC. And what's happening in BTC is some amazing stuff. First of all, if y'all see right here in our chat, we just mentioned over the last 24 hours, we've seen about negative 14,000 or rather 14,000 BTC, you know, leave exchanges or, uh, you know, outflows are, you know, uh, big people, big players moving Bitcoin off exchanges, right? And it's been about 19,000 BTC in the past week and about 71,000 BTC in the last 30 days. So what does this mean? Well, when you have a lot of Bitcoin moving off exchanges, that creates a deflationary pressure on supply. What, what do I mean by that? Well, if there's not a lot of Bitcoin sitting on exchanges from sellers, right? They would be less inclined to sell. If they're removing Bitcoin from exchanges, that means they're probably planning on holding it for a longer period of time. And they're not really worried about the recent, you know, most up-to-date price action, meaning they're not scared of the market dumping anytime soon. And they're definitely not selling here, which is at 58,000 or so. So this is a very good sign and it's extremely bullish, okay? So what's effectively happening in the crypto space right now is a huge supply crisis that might be coming its way, which means that if there's less sellers in the market and then there's still a lot of demand for BTC, pretty high chances that prices are probably going to keep heading up, right? But how, how do you use that information uh, you know, at present moment, right? Because it's possible that, you know, even if prices are going to go up, you know, this thing might chop around here for, you know, next several days or week or two and then break out, right? Well, here's what I'm seeing in the market at present moment, okay? On the hourly time frame, what, what's clear to me is if you look at this previous area that rejected price once, twice, and then sent us all the way to 51,000 or so, we are coming back to that same 59K area as resistance. So we already hit a bunch of times right here. Coming up to it a third time, I have pretty high confidence that this is going to get broken to the upside, meaning there's a pretty high chance that we're hitting 60K, maybe you know 65K and you know beyond some point soon, okay? But at, at present moment, what needs to happen is, first of all, on the local timeframes, 
we need to hold this key low right here. Okay. So if I were to enter a long position right now, and by the way, I'm already in a long position, hint, hint. If I were to enter a long position right now, I would keep my stop here. The first big target I would have is previous all time high. That's the easiest trade that I could take. Okay. If I were to say want to be, you know, a little bit more bullish, I would aim for some of the bigger targets that I have in mind. If I turn on these pivots right here, okay, I'd aim for this R2. Okay. The R2 is around um, 63,000 or so, right? And that also happens to be, all right, if you look over here, if I stretch this trend line across, okay? And then we also utilize this ascending trend line that we broke down from. If we hit both those over the next, I don't know, 24 hours or so, that's somewhere around about 63,000 to about 64,000. Right over the next 24 hours, we would hit these both both these trend lines right here. So to me, it makes sense that if I was in a long position, I'd want to be taking profits around 63 or 64k. Now it's not necessary that you have to close out your entire position. You know, for all we know, price action could do something like this and then rip up harder and higher towards 65, 70k, and beyond. Now, ultimately, I will say that I'm pretty bullish for most of 2021, but I also don't think that the market is just going to just, you know, go straight up. I think there's going to be a lot of choppy movement and there's going to be a lot of shakeouts in the market because when, when a market is so abundantly clear that it's, you know, very bullishly trending, it will do whatever it takes to shake out as many positions as it can, especially the heavily leveraged positions. The one thing that we can notice is there is a lot of leverage in the system. How do I know that? If I go to this website, BYBT, and I track the open interest of futures contracts right here, and I look at the open interest right here across all exchanges, all futures exchanges, it's about $22.6 billion. That is a lot of open interest. And you know, a majority of this, I'm fairly confident, is long positions, okay? Uh, I'm pretty confident that there's not a whole lot of short positions in the market that have endured all this pain on the way up. So by that argument, we know that there's a ton of leverage in the system and a ton of longs. So when there's a ton of leverage and a ton of longs in the system, what does the market do? Well, the market will try to break out, uh, rather break down that leverage by either chopping around a lot having grinding behavior, sometimes very sharp sell-offs, right? And then recoveries, and then, you know, still just be trending. And when you start breaking down this leverage, then the market feels a little bit lighter. It's like, you know, when you're moving uphill, okay, you want less and less weight on your back to be able to move higher and higher. It's the same way the market works is when there's less and less leverage in the system, it becomes easier for the market to push up because bigger players in the market can drive the movement up a little bit easier that way. All right. So at present moment, you know, this is the one point of concern that I have. And this is why I believe that that 64, 63 area will probably pose resistance. I don't really know how strong that resistance is going to be. For all I know, we might just you know rip right through it and start heading up towards, you know, 65, 70 K, right? But I feel pretty darn bullish about BTC, and I'm not too concerned about price action. Okay. Um, the other way we can sort of look at uh, price action is, is something like this. Okay. You know, it's it's kind of the same thing as this wedge, but I have it in a more circular format, and we call this, you know, in in traditional markets, kind of like a funnel or rounding top. And what these funnels or rounding tops imply is that momentum, when it's coiling up like this and rounding the top like this, right? It means that momentum is fading right here. Now, momentum fading doesn't mean that from here we have to dump down. It just means that this coiling behavior is going to have a release to one side or the other. Now, that could mean once we coil up enough, it might just rip 
right? Before you can blink, we might be at 70K. Or it might also just crash to the downside and have a maybe a quick, quick, you know, down towards 40, 49K or 44K or something, and a quick recovery. And then later in the month, we might take off higher, right? These are situations that we need to keep an eye on. But what does this coiling behavior mean for Bitcoin, but also altcoins? Well, if we're coiling up in this area and we move sideways here, I believe that altcoins are very perfectly positioned for much, much higher upside. Because the one thing that helps Bitcoin, um, or I'm sorry, the one thing that helps altcoins break out and do really well is when Bitcoin is moving sideways and Bitcoin dominance is generally down or even trending down. So when we have this kind of coiling behavior that I just showed y'all earlier, where price moves sideways and we have dominance going down, that means altcoins can break out much easier because money has to find yield somewhere. Meaning money has to find appreciation and find uh, you know, profitability elsewhere if it's not Bitcoin. And that could mean that really fantastic projects um, in the altcoin space. Some of the projects that I'm paying attention to, like I just showed y'all, Pancake Swap, which is cake. Sushi is another project, which I believe is fundamentally very, very undervalued. Very undervalued. And I really think a lot of people are doubting sushi. Um, I think sushi is going to be an extremely well-performing asset over the next several months. Um, I find it to be an incredible buying opportunity. I've already picked up a bunch of sushi. Again, not investment advice, not telling you how to buy, but I believe you know in, in much higher upside in terms of sushi. If you go to this website called Token Terminal, you can actually find very, very unique inside in the DeFi space, okay? And what you will notice is if you look at, say something like, Sushi right here. Oh, there it is. Okay. <clears throat> well, this is just Revit new. Um, how am I trying to find TVL and stuff? What the heck is it? Where's the sales? Okay. So the one thing that I like about Sushi is kind of like Uniswap. All right. The price to sales ratio, which is its ability to perform in the market in terms of, in terms of its uh, token value to say the, to uh, the total value locked or the amount of you know, people utilizing um, the, the platform itself is extremely positive, extremely positive. And the same goes for Uniswap, by the way, very, very good, you know, price to sales ratio, right? It's, if you're a stock market trader, it's kind of analogous to, to PE ratios. Um, not really because, I mean, PE ratios also imply, you know, other factors, but I think you guys get the point, right? The point is, you know, you can track some of the metrics um, about SushiSwap right here on this website, Token Terminal. And what you'll find is when you compare SushiSwap to many, other, uh, many of the other projects in the DeFi space, SushiSwap is very, very undervalued by many metrics. So this is one of the reasons why I'm extremely bullish on Sushi Swap, and you know, feel free to do your own research. Ethereum, um, I mean, I'm pretty darn bullish on Ethereum as well. Um, I believe that you know we broke above this key star level right here, which is 1763, and as long as we stay above this area right here, I find you know price action to probably be extremely bullish. Um, more than likely. I would be looking for you know 2,000 plus target, like 2,500, maybe 3,000 going into the summertime. We also have, I think, the EIP 1559 coming up in July, if I'm not mistaken. So that should lift you know, some of the uh, congestion, the fees, and all the other features that are being released um, on, on Ethereum uh, over the summertime. And that should be bullish for you know, price action in ETH. So I own a bunch of ETH. I'm extremely bullish on ETH. And so I'm looking for, you know, pretty, pretty good upside going into um, April and, you know, the summer months. Okay. Um, let me see. SRM and Solana. 
SRM is basically the the DEX that is going to be working with Solana, and I'm bullish on both. Um, you know, I I own uh, a lot of SRM. Um, I personally think that SRM is very undervalued, and so is Solana. But these projects, you know, something that y'all should definitely be paying attention to. Solana is basically like an ecosystem project, kind of like Ethereum and and kind of like Polkadot. You know, I'm sure you guys have seen how well Ethereum and Polkadot have performed over the last, you know, one to two years. Um, I think Solana is not too far behind. Okay. Uh, and then there's, you know, things like FTT, right? Then there's exchange tokens, right? Exchange tokens, I believe, are also extremely undervalued, you know, underrated, undervalued. Uh, and I believe that exchange tokens are probably going to do incredibly well going into the rest of 2021. Why? Because they are going to account for all the fees and all the users that are going to be interacting with the exchanges as the uh, crypto space grows for the rest of 2021, 2022, 2023. And they're going to start pricing that in into their models, right? FTT right now is, I want to say it's like a three and a half, you know, $4 billion uh, project. Right, so FTT the token, Binance, so BNB, Binance Coin the token is currently valued at a forty billion dollar market cap, and I believe personally that FTX is a far superior exchange um, with incredible management and incredible reach in all parts of the the space. So why not uh, FTT being somewhere close to the valuation? A Binance coin, right? So if Binance coin is valued at 40 billion and FTT is at four, that's a pretty darn you know huge difference, right? So that's why I'm pretty bullish on FTT and I believe it's it's going to do incredibly well going into the future. Okay. So let me see here. Uh, so we talked about um, Bitcoin price action, um, you know, near-term areas for potential stop rates. Uh, potential targets. Um, the one big thing that's coming up um, you know, tomorrow is uh, the monthly close and the quarterly close, actually. So I personally think that the quarterly close, you know, going into tomorrow or monthly close uh, going into tomorrow is going to be uh, extremely um, valuable and insightful for us to know if the market is still, you know, very strongly bullish and heavily trending because we've now had one, two, three, four, five, six straight months of just, you know, candles that are ripping to the upside on the monthly basis, right? The way you want to understand, you know, the bullishness from, um, from a monthly standpoint is you want to start mapping out, you know, first of all, how do the candles look, right? What is the kind of volume associated with the candles? And then where are the wicks and where are the follow-up candles uh, um, associated with the prior wicks. So for example, if you look at this candle right here, January, it closed at a high of 42,065. And then the follow-up February candle closed higher than the previous wick. Okay. So if y'all are familiar with how, you know, price action works is when you have say a resistance level and say, you know, this was the previous resistance level of this monthly candle right here right? And we wicked all the way up here, but we closed down here. How do you tell that the next candle is going to be bullish and we're going to have more upside? Well, the worst thing that could have happened is say you had this huge wick right here and then the follow-up candle, right? Went up like this and started to roll over right from here and it closed lower than the previous candles open and close. So what I'm trying to say is if this candle right here, the February candle had closed way the heck down here or even further down, that would have started to give us signs that things are about to start getting rocky and maybe a little bit more bearish. But that's not what happened, right? In fact, what happened was this candle actually closed much higher than this candle closed. And in fact, it actually closed higher than the high of the wick right here, which is even more bullish, okay? Now, this candle that we're seeing in March is pretty damn close to this wick high right here. 
a wick high of the February candle is 58,464. Where are the current prices? 58,797, right? So by tomorrow, this candle should close above this marker or pretty darn close to this marker. If it closes higher, even better. If it somehow closes much, much lower, like 56, 55, 54, then we might have a you know, bit of a rocky month going into April. Doesn't mean that we have to dump or anything. It just means that, hey, you know, be careful, be cautious because the, the follow-up candle was not able to close above you know, the previous high. It's not that bad because we're still you know, closing above say this previous high, which is February, or this previous close, which is February's close right here, around 45,000. But it would have been great if we closed even above the previous wick high, All right? So that's kind of what I'm looking at going into the monthly and the quarterly close tomorrow. I'm still extremely bullish um, the way the candle looks right now. But again, you know, crazy things do happen um, in a span of 24 hours in crypto. You know, anything can really happen, right? So just something to keep an eye on. Uh, here's the quarterly candle, right? The quarterly candle looks really, really bullish. I mean, volume increasing from here to here to here. And now I don't see why the next quarter can't be even more bullish, right? From here, I wouldn't be surprised if we make it towards, you know, 70K or 75 or 80K, okay? So that's the one thing I'm looking forward to. Um, you know, for, for the next quarter, as long as things are good in the stock market, as long as um, the, the Fed in the U.S. is not tampering with interest rates, is not, I don't know, um, making things um, more restrictive in crypto or talking bad about crypto, I think crypto will do really, really well for the rest of 2021. There's going to be some rocky roads here and there, and there's going to be shakeouts. And you always have to be careful and take risk off the table, take profit off the table, not get too greedy, not go all in, right? Always have to do that. Never forget risk management, no matter how bullish things look. Um, and, you know, whenever you get too greedy, just remind yourself that at any moment, the market could take that away from you, okay? If you do not, cap, uh, if you do not properly manage your risk, you do not have proper capital management skills, you're going to lose everything that you've worked so hard to earn in this bull market. And once you lose the money that you've kind of worked hard, you don't have any more money to kind of put in the market. Right? Maybe you do, but it kind of becomes a vicious cycle, right? So I don't want anyone to fall into the cycle. It is okay to take profit. Don't let anyone fool you into thinking that, you know, you just have to hang on to your positions and, you know, uh, even if the market goes down closer to your liquidation point, it's okay. You'll get bailed out, whatever. Don't do that. Okay. Cause at any point things can turn and you can wipe out all the hard work that you've done in a matter of minutes, never be in that position. All right. Um, so that's pretty much it folks. I mean, you know, again, I feel pretty darn bullish in the market. I don't see any signs of us kind of I don't know, being, um, being bearish, uh, per se. Uh, maybe there's, you know, some consolidations that may happen along the way, but that's, you know, kind of the way the market goes, right? So all in all, I feel pretty good about the market. And again, if you want to come hang out with us, trade with us, uh, first of all, hit the thumbs up on our video that you're watching. That would help us a lot. And of course, go to our website, thealphatrades.com, hit the products page, buy our Advantage subscription, and come hang out with us. We have hundreds of members from all over the world um, chatting, putting up charts, talking about the projects that you know look good to uh, uh, look good to them, things that they're trading, um, things that uh, things that seem interesting, news that's happening, all kinds of cool stuff. So come join our community. All right, and uh, hit the thumbs up, and I'll catch up with y'all soon. Cheers.